Uh, so let's take another particular example. Let's, let's just say that uh, you have a company called Susan Jib. So Susan Jib is a profit maximizing pin making firm that can sell pins at the price of $20 each. Let's say that Susan Jib, Jib hire workers at a market wage of $120 per, per day per worker. Well, the first, uh, the first question doesn't really have anything to do with the numbers there. So sometimes I'll throw a bunch of numbers at you and the question is going to test you whether or not you understand the economics of, of it rather than being able to manipulate the numbers, right? So what market structure does this company sell its product? Well, you know that they're selling at $20 each. So this is the product market. This is the product market because you sell pins in the product market. So that's the key. So understanding the final product is sold in the product market. So what market structure it is, is it? If you're selling at $20 each, then it's perfectly competitive. Now, how do you explain this? Uh, perfectly co competitive because price is the same. Um, you're, you're selling the same uh, and no differentiation. So you have no control over the price, so you know it's a perfectly competitive uh, market structure. Now again, part B here is, is asking not for the pins, but in what market structure do laborers work in? Explain this one here. Well, again, go back to the prompt here, and it says Sus Susan Jib can hire workers, the market wage rate of $120 per worker. So all workers are, are paid $120. So once again, this is perfectly competitive. Perfectly competitive because wage rate is constant. So again, two different markets, and uh, it just happens to be that they're both perfectly competitive. But you have to you have to understand, even though there's not a whole lot of information, be able to determine which is a factor market and which is a product market. Uh, for part C right here, let's calculate the value of the marginal product of labor of the third worker. So show your work right here. Okay. So we have to uh, figure out, first of all, what is the price of a pin? So let's say uh, a, a pin will cost, uh, let's say a pin will cost um, $10 here. So let's say the price here is $10. So all the way down, no matter how many you sell, each pin will cost $10. So in, in this particular example, um, actually, hold on a second. The, let's say it costs $20 here. I believe the, the previous, to be consistent with what was on the previous page, it's $20 here. Certainly could increase or decrease, but let's keep it constant at that, one, at that $20 price. And let's say the wage rate here is, uh, uh, the wage rate is going to be $120. So you're paying $120 per day. Now, how do you find the how do you find the MPL here? Well, it's, it's pretty easier. So the MPL, the first one, MPL. There's a dash right here. Uh, it would be 10, and then it would be 20, and it would be 15, 10, 3, and then 1. So what is the MRP going to be? The MRP. Okay. So the MRP is going to be the price times the MPL. So at this point here, it's going to be 0. And then it's going to be 200. And it's going to be 400. And it's going to be 300 back to 200. And then you have a huge drop off here. You're going to have uh, 60 and then 20. So in terms of being able to figure out, it's pretty easy. Uh, you uh, actually, you. Um, you go ahead and uh, hire the first worker, second worker, third worker, fourth worker. You don't hire the fifth worker. Okay, so I showed a whole lot of work right here. A whole lot of work right here. What is the MPL of the third worker? And the only thing that was required here, the third worker, is 15 here. So the answer is um, actually 15. The value, so here is the value of the marginal product of the worker, uh, would be 300. Again, I, I, 
uh, I, go, I went ahead and drew the entire graph for this to, to get this. Again, it doesn't hurt to do that. Uh, but all you have to really do is find the value here is the NPL is 15 times 20 equals 300. So what is the profit maximizing output level? Again, let's go ahead and, and uh, redraw this graph here. Let's, let's go ahead and, and, and draw it here where there's a little bit more space. So you have the quantity of workers here with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And you have the quantity of labor here, and this is the number of pins. And you want to go with 0, 10, 30, 45, 55, 58, and 59. And you have the MPL. MPL is 10, 20, 15, 10, 3, and 1. And then you have the price. What, what are you charging for the pins here? And the price is $20. And so you want to get the MRP. See, the MRP is going to be 0, 200, 400, 300, 200, 60, and 30. But now you don't have the, you don't have the cost information. So let's go ahead and, and plug this number in here. What is the wage right here? You're paying 120 here, 120, 120, 120. Okay, so what is a profit maximizing output level? Now we have all the information here. Profit maximizing output level. Again, the formula uses where the MRP equals the wage rate. Okay, so yes, you hire the first worker. Yes, you hire the second worker. Yes, you hire the third and the fourth, but not the fifth worker. So it'd be helpful if you uh, box this entire row right here. And the output level... Output level is going to be, what is the number of pins? 55. Or another acceptable answer would be 55 to 58 pins. Now, if you were to say four workers, then um, it, it wouldn't hurt. Output level is 55 or 55 to 58 pins with four or four to five workers. The thing is, if you only say four to five workers, then uh, you're not answering what the output level is, and that's the number of pins here. But if you did box this area, chances are you will get credit. You will get credit uh, on the AP exam because you, you had that as a double safeguard. So thank you for watching. Edu